All right, so I have some uh, schematics and parts layout and stuff, and I thought we would go first and measure all the supplies, make sure the supplies are correct. That's always the first thing to do. So there's a plus 23, plus 15, plus 5, minus 5.25, minus 15, and minus 23. And they're all right back down here. So uh, let's turn on the meter, turn on the machine. All right, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, this one is plus 23, very good. And this one is plus 15, very good. This one is plus 5, very good. This one is minus 5 to 5, very good. This one is minus 15, very good. This one is minus 23, and it's... Oh, there we go. Not a good connection. Minus 23. So, all our supplies are good. All right. So, I can get rid of this. I don't know if you know, um, a lot of these uh, probes, uh, you can screw on an alligator clip on the end. That's what I was doing there. And I'll put back my insulator. All right, so um, next thing I want to do is take a look at the schematic or show you guys the schematic. I want to do a test. And uh, so this is the output driver. This big section here is the output driver. These, these uh, four transistors two push, two pull, and then a drive section, so real healthy. Um, this is the front panel connector. So really what we want to look at is, uh, we know there's nothing coming out this side, but is there anything going in this side, okay? And I don't see any test points um, here. Uh, I'd like to see a test point here. It goes to a different page. This is the other page it goes to, so these, uh, these go like this, and there's a test point right here, so um, I should draw down this TP12 right here. So there's, there's a test point 12, and then there's a test point 6. There's an attenuator here, so we'll see if we're getting any signals here on 12 or 6. And then if we look at the parts layout, uh, here's test point 12 and here's test point 6. We just checked all the voltages and uh, these are the two capacitors that I changed. So let's get the probe on it. All right, test point 12 is down here and we need some ground. I think all the ground's okay. I just used the case. Um, there we go. All right, let's turn the uh, turn the machine on. We still get the E21, but we can override that. And uh, I don't see any signal. Three microseconds. Yeah, I don't see any signal there. Let's go to TP6. TP6 is here. I don't see anything at six. Um, let's see here. Let's go back. Let me make sure my trigger is working. Uh, no, my trigger's not working. So let's see here. Let me let me get it into a state where it's ah. There we go. Okay, maybe that'll help. All right, so now there should be something going on. Let's go back to TB12. And I don't see anything on 12. Let's go to six. I don't see anything on six. Maybe a little tiny thing but it's really super small, just leaking through something. All right. So, uh, let's go even further back on the chain. Let's go to,
Hmm. I don't see another test point that's easy. Out, out. U401. Where is U401? U401 is that one. All right, let's poke around. Some other test points here, I don't know what they do. something <laughs> way back there oh I'm shooting in the dark right now so I need to I like to probe 15 and 16 15 and 16 see how big are these chips and where is pin one uh, And one is away from me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I think the sixteen are there. Okay. Let's see if I can probe those. Nothing. 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 Okay, we need to back up farther in the chain. All right, I need to recap here. I got to figure out what is working and what isn't working. So I found a test point here that most things um, I can look at. And so we can see on the scope back there. I know the camera shot's kind of funny, but the scope's going to be back there and uh, the machine's up here. So I can change the period. You can see that, that on the scope there, I can change the period in coarse and fine and everything. That works good. Uh, I can uh, set the width of the pulse, so that is working. I can set the, uh, let's see here, I can set the angle of the leading edge. I can set the angle of the falling edge. Um, There's a high and a low amplitude that is not available on this test point, but it would be available in the output, but we're not looking there yet. We're looking way back in the circuit. So um, I can even set up a double pulse situation. You can see it there. Let me, let me change the width here. Yeah. Uh, and let's see here. Yeah, so I can set up double pulses, um, single pulses, oops, too far. So, I mean, the machine works. You would think the only thing that was broken would be the output section, but it's still, it's still confusing me on the schematics. So let's uh, maybe dive in a little bit. Maybe, maybe you can help me uh, figure out <laughs> you meaning once I explain it, maybe I can understand it myself. You know, one of the problems of thing, doing things yourself is that you maybe overlook things and by explaining it to somebody else, that helps you understand the circuit. So you guys, even though it'll be a day or week after I do this, that you guys will comment, um, it still helps me walking through it and talking to you guys. So yeah, let me, uh, let me look a little bit further. So I've worked on pulse generators before. Um, I've worked on two uh, Philips pulse generators. They were easy to troubleshoot. They were very logical and they were laid out nice on the PC board and nice test points and everything. Very easy to work on. This one is not. <laughs> um, but it does have the same structure. You generate the period, you generate a delay from the trigger. If it's free running, that doesn't do anything. Um, you can adjust the width of the signal and then the slopes. So I've, I've demonstrated all that just now. So all of this stuff is working. The amplitude and then the out 
output amplifier. These don't seem to be working, one or both. Um, so where was I looking? I'm not quite sure. I found test point nine, and I'm not quite sure where it is in the dive schematic. Um, the schematics are a bit blurry from the scanning, and uh, it's a, a little bit hard to find test point nine. Um, but, um, yeah, let me, um, we can find some other test points. There's, uh, here are these magic chips, the ones with the big heat sinks on them. So there's one that does the period generation, one that does the delay generation, one that does the width generation. So those chips, these are these big hybrids, uh, and there's a test point three. So let's look at test point three. Test point three is next to this chip here. All right. And uh, you can see its output here. And as I change the uh, width, uh, yep, the width is changing. And uh, yeah, and like I said before, the uh, period can change as well. So this, uh, this whole train here seems to be seems to be functional, so these are out of the question. Then we're looking at um, the slope generation. We saw that slope generation working, but let's find it in the uh, let's find it in the schematic here. Slope generation. Where is slope generation? Uh, here. So slip generation works on some current sources and switching and everything. Um, and I believe this might be test point nine, but I'm not sure because I can't really read the writing, but we might be looking here. So we've come into this thing and the, we've generated some slopes and everything. Um, the output of the slope generator though then gives you a differential signal that gives you out and not out. And those are test point four and five. So we should see complementary uh, signals here. And why are we now going to complementary signals? Well, that's because the push-pull amplifier on the output is going to require plus and minus signals in order to operate efficiently. So um, yeah, so let's look at test points uh, four and five. All right, test point four and five are right here. Uh, they're right next to each other. So we just look at one of them. We don't need to look at both. Four and five, and we can take a look at that. And I don't think that's healthy. It's very, very small. I think it probably should be bigger than that. Um, even though it looks like it might be doing something that's four. Let's, t er, let's see. One, two, three. That was test point. That's test point five. Let's look at test point four. Here is test point four. So they are differential, but they're kind of weak. So we, we'll call them suspect right now. They do something, but they seem to be very suspect. All right. So where do they go from there? All right, uh, comes into this part. I've put them here, test point four, four and five come into here. They come into this chip, another one of those magic chips. This is the shaper chip. And it sends a differential output and we can get one of those here at test point six, okay? And then we have test point 12 after the attenuator. So you create the shape, you make it into a, the signal, you then can attenuate it to make the signal big or small, and then you send that out to the final amplifier, I think. So we can look at, we looked at four and five, let's look here and here. Okay, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think this is six here. All right, six is nothing. All right, so maybe this chip is dead or maybe it needs to be reset. I'm not pointing at my, uh, this chip here might be, 
might be dead, might need to be reseeded. Maybe there's some associated circuitry around it. Maybe it is the thing that is loading down test point four and five and not allowing those voltages to be big. So I'm going to call that one suspect, 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 suspect. Anyway, I'm going to call that one questionable and uh, we maybe we'll swap it out for one in a different board. Uh, yeah, let's try that. 